you need to delete the emails I sent you? Do any of them make any sense? Does, um, does it help? I hope. <laughs> I'm trying to just the come up with an inventory. When I took that seminar, if you were going to contest, you have six years to do so, longer than added statute applies. That's according to the webinar that I took. So I'm not looking to do that, I was just putting it out there as a fact. Do you have yeah. yeah. And you haven't been able to the portal yet? Sure. No. Not but sure the information on that spreadsheet, we yeah. spread it out. There's a lot of information in those cells. So I do know we have, I'm going to talk about it. 31,800 total watts of bulbs in Port Montgomery. And I know our, our bill is somewhere around $3,600 a month. That comes out to 47 cents a kilowatt, which <laughs> seems pretty high to me. So some, so we need, it needs to be looked at. I'm doing the best I can with it. I'm just trying to have data that we can act off of. I mean, the chief had his guys buying, what was it, nine poles that weren't illuminating. And in that chart, they had coordinates so you can map the street lights, which I did. But when you superimpose them over a regular map, they're not perfect. There's a little bit of uh, subjectivity there. Just something to move forward from. I'd like to have the map, have the number of it out of all 167, how many watts it is, how many lumens it is, an LED, mercury vapor, or, or what's the other one, sodium vapor, and move forward from there. I wouldn't mind that. Thank you. Okay, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At a meeting held on the 25th of June, the Town Board Town of Highlands authorized a, by motion, the setting of a public hearing to discuss the expenditure of funds from the Capital Reserve Fund known as the Town Hall Repair Reserve Fund. To wit, the sum of up to $20,000 for tiling and flooring improvements at the Town Hall. Such expenditure from the Town Hall Repair Reserve Fund is subject to a public hearing pursuant to Section 62 of the General Municipal Law of the State of New York. This hearing will uh, take place at the Town Hall, 254 Main Street at 7 p.m. on July the 9th, at which time all interested parties will be heard. I'll ask for a motion to open the public hearing. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Is there anyone here that would like to uh, talk about the expenditure? <coughs> Ask any questions? Seeing there are no questions, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Second. All in, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. We'll, we'll bring that up later on in the, the meeting. Or? Public comment. Mr. Malarkey, public comment. Daniel Malarkey, Town of Highlands, regarding the trolley bus. I've been making some phone calls. I have some connections. As for this week, as of the 4th of July, I'm waiting for the dust to settle, and they say psychologically, Wednesday is the best day of the week to broach business. 
So I'm waiting till Wednesday. I'm going to call Goshen a couple more people. But Vince Tamanya from Putnam contacted me. <clears throat> he told me you're looking at a grant of about $250,000 for two buses. He says you want one in case one's being serviced. But uh, he thinks it's a great idea. He says, I don't know why it's taken so long, but... Who was this? Uh? Vince Tamanya. He's a legislator over in Putnam. Okay. He was instrumental in getting the trolley bus that runs from Cold Spring to the Bear Mountain Bridge, which is another thing I want to also approach is Nice New York State Bridge Authority. I want to be able to stop at the bridge there. They have that little road where you have access to the Trailside Museum mm -hmm. because on weekends when that road's really backed up to the circle, I'm going to have a schedule to maintain and I can't... I'm going to have to... I'm thinking of all the little details. Okay. But I, I thought I figured you would. Every two weeks or so I'll have a report for you on all an right. update. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. We have the uh, minutes of the June 25th meeting. I'll ask for a motion to accept the minutes as read. There was written. just one, um, you had a, on the public, I mean on the hearings for the um, 90 Memorial Drive, you had two opens. You just need to, that second open needs to be a closed. You had a motion to open and another motion to open. So it was just one word that you need to change. Mm -hmm. As for a motion to accept the minutes as modified? Motion. I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Thank you. Communications. We received a in an inspection um, at the uh, sewer uh, Highlands sewer improvement area and that, and down at our sewer plant there were a number of uh, efficiencies uh, of which I think R Richie will talk about a little on his report but they they are all they're all being addressed um, but I just wanted to note that we do have this notice of violations from uh, DEC. Tomorrow, June, let's see, what, uh, July the 10th at 11 a.m. at the Senior Center that's just down the road here on Drew Avenue, there will be a public hearing having to do with the Church Hill properties. Uh, all you want to know and don't want to know about what's going on with the new hotel up on 9W that is proposed to be built. So that's tomorrow, 11 a.m., Senior Center on Drew Avenue. The IDA will be there to explain their proposal. Communications, I think that's all I have. The idea. Anybody have any other communications that uh, would be pertinent? Okay. Financial reports. On June the 26th, we paid out $47,894. This includes uh, heritage uh, Costco heritage for food fuel delivery $2513 $6639 for legal services Orange County waste $13,027 for landfill charges Eagle fire and safety for um, work done on the police cars $3143 in July the 5th, we paid out $157,473. Uh, sanitation um, maintenance vehicle parts, uh, $5,104. Uh, 
Gladfelter Brokered Services, $15,516 for the wor workers' comp insurance policy renewal. j and and Stafford Corporation, $2,000. Uh, that's for the uh, cemetery lawn maintenance. Highland Falls Library, $60,340 for their quarterly contribution. O&R for streetlights, $3,398. RBT CPAs, that's for our one of our two audits going on, uh, $12,000. That's half of it, right? We're, okay. Um, it, it, it's too bad we can't cancel that and just take the state audit, but I know they audit different things. So uh, I... Um, $25,000. $420 for justice court uh, fees collected. TAM Enterprises, $2,088 for the vacuum truck at Oakwood Stations. And Rockland County Solid Waste got $10,000, $10,456 for landfill charges. Wex Bank, $4,419 for uh, multiple departments and fuel consumption. Legion Fireworks, $2,300, that's our town contribution to the 4th of July celebration. That definitely does not pay for the total cost of the fireworks, but it's our portion of the fireworks. We uh, talked a, a little bit about the budget process. Is there anybody else who would like to add to that? Uh, June, Richie, Guy, we're, we're, we're gonna, uh, Kelly, we, we, we talked about going, more or less going according to the book and doing things the way the budget officer uh, is supposed to do. The, I, I forget whether it's tentative or preliminary, but right. forgive me for that. Okay. But more or less, you're gonna put together the budget after conferring and getting uh, budgets from the various departments. Right. It's going to be a raw budget that's going to be almost a wish list as to what they would like to have. Right. We'll have a bottom line for $100,000 over the tax cap. Right. So now how do we whittle it down to a, a reasonable uh, budget? So uh, that, and, and then the reason we're doing this is not necessarily to cut on the amount of meetings that we make, although we do meet every Monday for two months. Uh, We'll try to get a budget only meeting, boom, two or three hours, whatever it takes to go through uh, most of it, and then the next time come back in and do another two or three hours. Uh, did you have some dates that, uh, uh, it, without telling me the dates, why don't you send a calendar to the okay. board yep. on, on the proposed dates of uh, what has to be filed when and what okay. have you? That, that, that would be the best way to do it. Yep. Okay. But what would you anticipate would be a date for us to uh, start? To start? When are you going to start? I'm going to start. I know you've got other things to do. <laughs> so working backwards, the tentative budget is due September 30th. So I have to have everything back from all the departments and you know, get that all put into one document, calculate the benefits that to the board by September 30th. So if we work backwards from there, um, we're in the second week of July, they probably need two weeks. I probably need maybe a little more than two weeks, depending on where I'm at with the audits. So I'm probably trying to get the packages out. Next week, well, like the week after. Okay. department heads get back to me the second to third week in August, so I, it, it's a tight turnaround time. It's hard mm -hmm. in the summer time. Okay. Um, you know, people taking vacations and things, and the audits have. Now, when you get to the department heads uh, wanting to come in and talk to you, uh, let me know. I'd be glad to sit down with you okay. at that time to, to just to help out some. So the way we've done it in the past, and it'll still go like this, I send out a package to each department head with all the departments that they budget for. They'll have some historical data that they get for the last two or three years. 
they get worksheets to fill out so they can document and you know their budgeting for how much work they need budget, what they want for salary increases, what equipment they might need, things like that. They email them hopefully back to me sometime, you know, I prefer email because then I can just copy and paste, but then I'm going to put it all together in one big tentative budget for all of you. So in the past, we were going department by department. It was a lot of paper. It was a lot of copying. I think this will be you know, it's a simpler way of doing it. Everyone gets one uh, master budget to go from there. It also gives you an idea, like Bob said, your $100,000 over the tax cap right off the bat. So, so no I was using that as a fictitious number. I wasn't being serious. No, I know. I know. All right, okay. okay. Anybody have any questions, board? No. And the last date to adopt the budget is? Sometime in November? Yeah, uh, November 20th. November 20th, but we have a board meeting the 12th, so that would be what we would be shooting for. Okay. Any and just, yeah. I really think it's going to take more than a couple of meetings to go over the budget. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm just, we'll just do what we can. We'll sit there two or three hours. Right. And I think doing things like this, two to three hours, you're burned out. You're, you're, you're ready to just push it out of the way and get done with it. And that's not fair to the budget or the ones you're looking at. So it, it'll take as much time as it takes. I mean, there's no problem. With that. There's no rush. All right. Okay. Uh, while you're talking finances, um, I mentioned to the board about the insurance mm -hmm. that um, it's a pro what eight to ten percent raise in the uh, premium. It's an eight percent increase in the premium effective September first. However, what I noticed before I came into the meeting, um, the calculations that the health insurance company gave me didn't include um, the employees' contributions towards the health insurance. So I didn't have time to run the numbers tonight, but it's actually going to be less than 8% increase in the same insurance. When do you need the board to approve? Well, again, you know, um, that it's a tight deadline. Our plan ends August 31st. Okay. So mm -hmm. we have one more meeting in July. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there's paperwork and, and things that have to be filled out and turned over to the insurance. Okay. So get whatever information you can on the, the present policy to the town board, and then we'll uh, hopefully approve it at our next meeting. Okay. It would, um, if you want, just, the, you know, what are you looking for? Just how much it's going to cost? Yeah, and what it's providing. I think there's one center column on your yeah. on the sheet that yeah. you have. Yeah. Like this. Or the whole sheet you can give us. Exactly, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this has all the numbers in it, but it doesn't have the employee contribution. Okay. Okay. Department heads, uh, not department heads, li liaison, board. Rich Sullivan. Richie Sullivan. So <clears throat> I'm not as well prepared as I normally am because you gave me a lot of homework. So I'll touch upon what I did. So in regard to the street lights, I got the spreadsheet from Kelly. I know the chief, thank you, had guys look to, for lights around. I think you found nine of them. There's a lot of things I don't know. Here's what I do know. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different kinds of lights. They're based upon lumens. Lumens is not quite candle power. It's more how the light is dispersed. And along with those lights, depending upon the technology, they have wattages that go along with them. Sometimes you'll have a higher lumens from a lower wattage if it's a better light. I can't tell you from the data how many of them are LED, I'm not sure yet. I can tell you that there's 167 of them all together. And on the chart that I got, I know it's not gonna be, I sent everybody an email late today. I was able to kind of graph out what they look like. As time goes on, I'm gonna take that graph and superimpose it over a town map. I would like to add the data for each and every light, how many lumens, how many watts and whatnot that goes along with it because to start this process, we have to have an inventory. 
On June 27th, I dedicated my day to the town, attending two webinars and a conference call. In a webinar, New York Power Authority had it on LED lighting, and uh, I, I'm not well prepared to present my final report on it. In short, they have people that will come into your municipality and do an inventory for a fee. I'm not sure what that fee is, or if there's grants that go along with it. I'm kind of trying to give us to hit the ground running without doing all that. I'll do the best I can. Um, the deadline for filing for their grant participation is July 31st. I don't think we're going to make that this year. The mayor of Kingston and the supervisor of Red Hook spoke about their towns. You can rent or you can take ownership or just let O&R continue to own them. And you sent out that one email that talks about O&R's ownership or what they'll do to replace your lights. It's a little bit nebulous to go through. <coughs> they'll do 2% a year and something in another clause says they only do 20% of their whole region per year. I'm not sure if there's anything available based upon what I read out of that. Uh -huh. So as you move forward, I don't foresee 167 lights becoming something that we take ownership of. Because if you do, then you have to have certified linemen do anything on them, not just someone in a bucket truck. We could look into that as time goes on if people want to. So on that subject, um, I sent out an email late today with uh, some workups on it. I do know that altogether, we have 31,800 watts of street lights in the Fort Montgomery District, according to that spreadsheet. And I know what our bill is every month. I'm not gonna make any mistakes on TV, but the kilowatt hour cost seems abnormally high to me. So it's something that we'll have to check into as time goes on. Uh, so that's enough on that subject. Well, the, let me add one thing to that subject. Now, I think you and or the chief said there was nine lights that are not working out. Yes, sir. If we could get that to Deb and tell them we expect a discount for these lights until they're repaired. Because we're sending, you know, we're sending them a check for $3,300 every month right. for 160 some lights. So take nine out of that. Uh, well, we ought to be able to get some sort of discount from them. And not just that, I sent out spreadsheets that have enough room to work to Pat Patterson, to yourself. If anybody feels like printing them out and giving them somebody on patrol, I'm not gonna drive around at nighttime looking to see which ones are out and put them on the chart. There's enough people to work for the town. Maybe we can get that information and I'll process it into a, a raw, you know, into a final form where we have an inventory and a report. That's how they found it. They uh, took a street location book, okay. street by street, and came up with nine. Okay. Nine I, I come forward to one. The grid that they use, the X and Y coordinates, are on each pole, and the spreadsheet I sent out to everybody has those on there. There's six numbers each. I wanna change it to where it's numbers one through 167, but I need time to do that. That's gonna, I need time to process all that, so. That's, uh, that might be just, Kelly, that might be just a couple hundred dollars, but oh, yeah. it's a couple hundred dollars. Exactly. And plus it might make them uh, repair the lights quicker. Okay, Rich, got anything more? I'm reluctant to say what I think the kilowatt hour cost is on TV. It just seems abnormally high to me. We'll, con you know, we'll, we'll get together and see where that goes. So later on that day, I went up to the highway garage at Pat Patterson, had the pleasure of talking to a gentleman whose name I forgot to write down from Solar B. So it's a little bit different than the last time I did this, which was about 12 years ago. Doris Lent, who was kind enough to give me a report that Bill Etzel, and I don't know if you remember Joe Manis from West Point when he was here, he was involved with Vision on that pond. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty much stuff that I mostly know already. They looked into putting regular aerators in the pond, powered by wherever the you know, electricity and whatnot, and they thought they might need two or three of them. When Pat and I spoke with this gentleman from Solar B, I was disappointed in that the cost for a Solar B is now $51,000. With everybody like going green and running for office, I think it'd be a great opportunity for somebody to try and find a grant to do something like that. In conversations about its effectiveness, they all but said it's 100%, but you can't get locked into that. And I would be reluctant to have a flop for that kind of money. I don't think that would happen, but I'm not solid with it yet. So it's just a work in progress. And what's in that pond is Eurasian milfoil. And the other thing that's there, 
not singling out myself, is Japanese knotweed, which is like bamboo. And it's invading the lake. And where I live at, again, this isn't about me. Where I live at, I think I might have a problem selling my home at this point because I'm being invaded by it. I have to go down with hedge clippers to keep it from coming into my backyard. So as time goes on, it's mostly on the north end of the lake. I'm not quite sure what route we could do or maybe get a little bit more professional advice on it. Um, so it was basically we made no commitment or anything like that. You can rent one for $25,000 for a year. That's not cool. <laughs> or if you take ownership, there's a two-year warranty. They sell, say that they'll last 20 to 25 years. They put in its guarantee that. They're protected from the ice. Someday, if anybody wants to take a ride, Doris Lent and I years ago went up to the town of Lloyd, up to Highland. They have one in their water system, and they can give us a report on it, and that's kind of where we left it. We didn't go forward anymore from there. I see they recently treated the lake. It looks pretty good. That'll last about a week or two, maybe three, and you just have this stagnant body of water that, uh, you know. It wasn't fully treated. I just found this out today. Okay. It wasn't fully treated. It was colored, actually, is, is what the term was. The oxygen level in there is so low that if they treated it, they would kill the fish. That's right. So they decided to back off it until the That's temperature right. gets a little cooler, and then they can retreat. That's right. And when people talk about the oxygen level in water, it's not H2O. It's not like taking a soda can and shaking it and your carbon dioxide bubbles. Oxygen dissolves in water in the same way. And that lake is known for having low levels because of the whole ecology of it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna keep on chugging along on it and uh, tell me, I've emailed a few people out there in, in political land, tell me someone to email for a grant and I'll do it and, and try and follow up on that. The ZBA, um, I don't know if they're meeting this month or not. If they did, it would be on the 18th. I don't think they are. Jack General didn't have any applications the other day, but I'm not sure of that. And with the building department, I met with uh, Bruce last week for a little while. Um, he talked about in the village that there were 13 properties that are now rectified. Not quite sure what he meant by that. The situation was addressed and rectified. And randomly while I was in town hall that day, just to be on a positive note, which I think we could all use a little bit of that, I had a person who's lived here for 40 years that said they thought the village has never looked better. I just thought I'd bring that up. And you're going to keep an eye on the violations down at the sewer plant? Yes. On the sewer plant, I hope that you and I can meet with Mr. Held. Wednesday or Thursday at Fawnwood and see just what's going on up okay. there. And uh, with the sewer plant, when Mr. Fusco gets everything ro going, the corrosion, that's part of the rebuild. So, right. yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Yes. Um, good evening, everyone. And good evening, everyone at home. If you bear with me, I wanted to share a little bit of. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi with you. So everybody's probably familiar with this quote that's attributed to Gandhi that says you must be the change you wish to see in the world. But there's somewhat of a story behind that which goes something like a woman brung her young child's or son to Mahatma Gandhi to say please speak with him about eating too much sugar. And so Gandhi says okay, come back in two weeks. The woman was a little perplexed, but she uh, complied and she went away. Two weeks later, she comes back and she waits through a long line of people and gets to the front and says again, please speak to my son about eating too much sugar. And by the way, out of curiosity, why didn't you speak to him the first time? And he says, well, the problem was I was eating too much sugar myself. And I decided that before I could counsel him on eating too much sugar I had to stop and so the moral of that story is that as we as a community and society look to seek for change then oftentimes it's necessary for us to look inward and see how we can uh, affect our own self and that being said I wanted to mention um, that there are several organizations in this community that I'm aware of and probably a lot more that I'm not that contribute to this idea of making the quality of life 
better in this community. You know, organizations like the Senior Citizen Advisory Council, they do so many things that most people may not be aware of. They meet frequently. They talk about how they can make things better for the community, in particular the seniors, and they probably get little to no credit for doing so. There's the vision that out there, out there in the hot days and the cold, trying to beautify the area. And as we go by and we're able to see the art walk or, or the pretty flowers, and that comes from the effort from some people that's been out there toiling in the sun. You know, we have volunteer coaches throughout the community that coach baseball or soccer or softball or basketball. And again, those people are not looking for any fame or fortune. They're just doing those things from the goodness of their heart. The others come to mind are the folks in the Juneteenth uh, committee. We saw a great Juneteenth celebration once again for the third year here in the town of Highlands in, in Highland Falls, New York, which probably is second to none in the Hudson Valley area. And then we had the 4th of July celebration of independence right behind that. In the pouring rain, people continued to march and exhibit this idea of, of pride in America. And so all these kinds of things can also be attributed to my colleagues here on the board, to the police force, to the ambulance corps, to the fire department. I mean, this is a small community. So I would implore people uh, who are here and, and who are not to, to look at the goodness of the community and look at the things that people do to make life better. Um, because I'm sure we all could find some things that, that necessarily are not the best of things, but uh, there's so much more good that, that outweigh the bad. And I just want to ask my community members to, to continue to focus on those things that are good and, and wholesome and that make this place a wonderful place. And certainly want to uh, 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 say without a doubt one of those uh, things that are good is, is, is our chief of police in this community and so that's all I have this evening. Very well put everything Thank that you. you said Rich, very well. Jim. I couldn't agree more with Councilman King, very well put and we do have a great community and we do need to focus on the good things and make things even better and not get caught up in down thoughts. Um, on the Juneteenth, I was privileged to go and listen. You had a wonderful speaker, and that was very well done. The, the entire Juneteenth weekend was very well done. And as far as the July 4th parade go, it was a little bit wet, but it was liquid sunshine, and it was great. <laughs> Um, the police department is doing great. We have an excellent police chief, and we're very pleased to have him in our employ. And that's it. Thank you, ma'am. Rich? I'll wind it down. I've been away for the past week, and I'll say no report tonight. Okay. <laughs> Not to be repetitive, but I would like to uh, congratulate the 4th of July committee uh, on putting forward one hell of a nice 4th of July program, the 50th anniversary. They did a great job and they did not let the rain deter them at all. It was amazing. Uh, we're lined up at West Point and when we started moving, the rain started coming down and we were soaking wet before we got out of West Point. But in this town, as Ty is talking about, people lined both sides of the street. The kids were standing out there and rushing water in the gutters they were standing right in the gutters trying to catch candy in the air uh it was truly a nice parade F juneteenth that speaker was tremendous he he was very very good uh he started off by saying i i think people are wondering why this white person is here at the juneteenth party talking about from the juneteenth. south by the way uh, from the south <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but he he was he was a good it's speaker. incredible we need more like him um, Fourth of July, this and that. Chief, you have anything for us? I do not, sir. Okay, Kelly. No. 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 Uh, Justin Ryder is on vacation, and his able replacement is this young lady sitting up front, who everybody <laughs> was wondering who it is. Uh, Amber, and I don't have your last name. Cameo. Cameo. Yes. Amber Cameo. 
Thank you for joining us, Amber. Um, yeah. and, and usually, Justin has time to talk during the meeting. I guess you don't have anything for us? <laughs> I don't have anything. Nothing okay. that's out of the agenda is present. Okay, we have the uh, resolution to spend money out of the town hall uh, repair reserve fund, whereas the board, the town board of the town of Highlands, pursuant to 62 of the general municipal law, the law of the state of New York, uh, established a capital reserve fund for the purpose of making capital repairs to the town hall, known as the town hall repair reserve fund, whereas the town board desires to authorize the expenditure of up to $20,000 related to tiling and flooring improvements at the town hall, and whereas a public hearing was duly held on the ninth day of July, 2018, seven o'clock uh, at the town hall, Main Street, Highland Falls, and all parties in attendance were permitted to speak on behalf or in opposition of the proposed reserve fund expenditure whereas the expenditure from said reserve fund constitutes a legislative action pertaining to a routine or continuing agency administration and management, not including new programs or major reordering of priorities that may affect the environment and accordingly is a type two action under the state uh, environmental quality review act. Now therefore be it resolved an expenditure not to exceed the sum of $20,000 is hereby authorized from the Town Hall Repair Reserve Fund to make tiling and floor improvements uh, at the Town Hall. Be it further resolved that the ongoing resolution take place immediately. Do I have a motion to move the resolution? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Sullivan? Aye. Councilmember King? Aye. Hi. Hi. Any business not above? I have a uh, letter to Supervisor Bob Livesey and members of the Town of Highlands Town Board. I respectfully resign my position as detective. I would like to thank you all very much for the opportunity. Leslie Perry, um, Detective Le uh, Leslie Perry. Do I have a motion to accept the resignation? I'll make the motion with regret. Uh, the qualifications, the character of the person were truly an asset to the town. And I'll make that motion with regret. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. I don't have anything more unless I've missed something. Anybody? Are you feeling like you need to, you could sing a song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could do that. I, I could uh, ask Richie Sullivan to give a little more of a report. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> How would that be? Uh, I could do that. Uh, Mary Jane, do you have anything for us? I can read you what the school board did. No, that's okay. It's like 18 pages. That's okay. Um, okay, I'll ask for a motion to, re, uh, to uh, motion adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Thank you all. Thank everybody.